Uh, Dwayne Mann leads out the Warrington side. Paul Cullen looks in determined mood, doesn't he? And this set of Warrington players has so often in the past proved a problem for the big teams in the big league. They've beaten Wigan and Castleford away from home. Substitutes tonight, Gus O'Donnell and Phil Vivas on the bench for St Helens. Warrington picking two forwards, Gary Tees and Neil Harmon, and probably electing to play the two forwards on the bench because Kelly Shelford, the loose forward from Warrington, is so versatile and he can drop back if necessary. Big night for David Lyon, £90,000 worth of talent from Warrington. This is the first time that Lyon has faced his former colleagues this season. David Lyon, the fullback. And in number seven, in the primrose yellow and blue of Warrington, is Greg Mackey. He was first at Warrington in 1989, then to Hull, where he was man of the match in the Premiership final against Widnes in 1991. Lee Penny, only 18. This is his eighth successive game at fullback. Signed last season, he has progressed through the academy and the alliance teams at Wilderspool. And remember, he scored a great try here on Sky at Castleford not too long ago. Match referee is Ian Ollerton from Wigan, 39 years old. It's his third season on the grade one list in the big league. Big league, big match. Warrington to kick off. Gary Sanderson, the second row forward, waiting to get this game underway. The bruising round the eyes. A legacy, really, of the fact that he broke his nose in the cup tie last week. Had to come off after just two minutes of that match, but he maintains his ever-present tag. So pitch in great condition, not a breath of wind. Conditions absolutely perfect for great rugby league as Thornley gets us underway. And the first touch back in the big league for a while for scrum half Jonathan Griffiths. Atmosphere is crackling, Mike. And expected it would be. That man, Jonathan Griffiths, of course, St. Helens without Shane Cooper. They'll certainly miss his organizing skills, but they certainly don't lose much when you can bring a man like Jonathan Griffiths into the fold. This is Sonny Nickel. Welcoming committee of three Warrington defenders for him. And this is Kevin Ward. Oh, that looked a bit high. And Kelly Shelford got one, and he's claiming he was elbowed there. Kelly Shelford, you'll see going there, and it's quite clear to me that Kevin Ward certainly went in with the elbow. He had every right there, Shelford, to speak to Ian Ollerton, the referee. He wasn't too impressed by it. But the penalty, Mike, has gone St. Helens' way for a high tackle by Shelford on Ward. Uh, well, it's amazing, that sort of thing. So difficult, of course, but uh, you can see quite clearly there that Mr. Ward was quite intent on lifting his elbows. Well, we said he was going to be fiery. Sanderson pulled out for a high tackle, another one. And again, it's on Kevin Ward. They've singled him out. And the referee's blown the whistle again for offside against Warrington. No, it's a forward pass. Bad discipline there by St. Helens. They had the tap penalty, and this time the forward overrun it. That really is bad discipline by the Saints. So, Warrington escaping then. And they have the ball now with Mackey, and now with Mark Forster. Going to be a tip one, this Eddie. Both sides realise the importance of these two points. Offside against St Helens this time. Well, we've heard plenty of whistle from Mr Ollerton in the opening uh, couple of minutes here. Well, he wants to take charge very early, but he would quite a few to pick from there, didn't he? Bernard Dwyer, one of the culprits. He was the first man off the rack. So Warrington with Bob Jackson, but not for long. That's a knock-on. It's not really started like a house on fire, this one. Stop and start there. You could see Jackson obviously looking towards the players coming towards him. A little bit of nerves. Take a while for both sides to settle in. I mentioned it's so important, and 
it's so important that both sets of forwards really do set the platform for their three quarters Griffiths feeds the first scrum for him and it's a penalty at the scrum Mackey drifting round the outside too quickly well the ball came out there Mackey thought that he could have played on as you mentioned Mr Ollerton the referee letting everybody know here that he got a whistle and he's blown for four penalties in the opening two minutes let's hope it settles down too many great players out there on show for it not to be a bit of a classic this one but it's a local derby you can expect it to be uncompromising to say the least this now is George Mann the ball pops up into the arms of Kevin Ellis well same thing again you saw Paul Lachlan coming through like an express train there but the defense was coming to him very quickly ball just drifting behind him very difficult to grab hold of that one here's Bob Jackson again then for Warrington neither side really has uh, settled down yet haven't got through a set of six tackles can Warrington do so here with Mackey and he takes the challenge in the end from George Mann Saints top four points clear Warrington have lost nine of their 17 big league matches so far but ever presence in the first division and they want to maintain that status next season. Last tackle. First set of six we've gone through here. Shelfer dabs the ball downfield. And that has a bit too much pace on it for Les Quirk. Excellent kick by Shelford. Punched it right away. There was no chance that Quirk could get to that. She is It's Griffiths with the feed and Griffiths with the possession and coming back on the blind side, just collared by his opposite number, Greg Mackey there. This pitch looking in absolutely perfect condition, isn't it? Five minutes gone, nil-nil. Joint just picking one up off his toes, Rapati and George Mann. Lachlan tying the run that time. Good, strong, straight run from Lachlan. He's got support from Les Quirk. Warrington coming back in number, numbers and snuffing the danger out eventually. Super run by the tall striding centre there, Lachlan. Lovely chip over the top by Rapati. Was he taken out in back play? No, the referee says Lee Penny can take this up towards Connolly. Good refereeing as well. Rapati took a dive then. There's a chip over the top. He knows he can't get through and there he tries a little bit of a swan dive. Gary Chambers has it for Warrington. That's a good run. Great run from Cornelly. Support inside. Mark Forster through Jonathan Griffiths' attempted tackle. Oh, it was a good job. Alan Hunt was there. So Warrington on the charge here now with Mackey. Dabbed the ball forward, but Rapati read it perfectly. Can't believe it, Greg Mackey punches a ball into the ground so it's hard to take. Rapati took it as simple as anything. But what a great break by Tony Thornley. Well backed up by the winger, Mark Foster, and that was a chance gone begging, really. They caught St. Helens out wide there. The defence wasn't strong. Super run. St. Helens just managed to keep the danger out. Kevin Ward in possession for them now. Now it's with Dwyer and Griffiths. George Mann. I get the impression, Eddie, that both sides, the tension's getting to them. They're just not settling down into any pattern. Everything's been done at 100 miles an hour. They've got to slow it down. Rapati with the kick downfield. Lee Penny has it now for Warrington. Oh, and met head to head there with Sonny Nickel. Well, the teenager, Lee Penny, knows what the big league's all about. This is Neil Kenyon. been Wayne Mann with the ball inside to uh, Gary Chambers but referee Ollerton unimpressed Shelford that's good play by Warrington Lee Penny saw the gap what a 
prospect this 18 year old is oh beautiful play by Wallington Warrington there it was good support play Shelford put Cullen through this is Cullen lovely reverse pass to Shelford he's got support from Mann oh he had two players out wide did Mann Kenyon and Alan Bateman there's Bateman at dummy half this is Kelly Shelford chips the ball over the top bounces off of St Helen's head and dropped into the arms of Jonathan Griffiths Well, it's all action by Warrington there. You saw Shelford doing it right. And that has got to be offside. He's given the penalty, surely. You can see quite clearly on the replay. But was it accidental offside? The ball was being kicked through pretty strongly. I think that may be a little bit too harsh for St. Helens. But there was no doubt in the mind of the referee, Ian Ollerton. Here's the replay again. Shelford nicely there. It was Kevin Ward that struck at it. Jonathan Griffiths went back from an offside position. Well, referee Ollerton's made his mind up. As you can see, it's penalty to Warrington and Tony Thornley. With 25 goals to his credit this season and make that 26. He's given Warrington the lead here. St. Helens nil, Warrington two. And the man who is not normally a goal kicker, well, he certainly wasn't brought to Warrington as a goal kicker. And he's uh, been pressed into emergency service because David Lyon is now at St. Helens. And that was a nice little kick to steady his nerves down and give Warrington a two-point lead. Just what they needed as well. But more important, perhaps, than the two points is the fact that Warrington had broken this St. Helens defence on four occasions. Oh, and that's a bad mistake. Well, is this going to be one of those nights for the Saints? Just a lack of concentration again. This is, this is the type of thing that just gives the coaches nightmares. It's Warrington in possession, the crowd appealing for a forward pass. But the referee waving play on, and Dwayne Mann has it for them all. Knock on by Jackson. It was a terrible pass from the Warrington hooker. Panic football once again. There was really no reason for trying to get that ball away. It wasn't on the last tackle. They were not forced to do that. 2-0 then, Warrington ahead. Ten minutes gone. St. Helens in possession with Les Quirk. And you notice we've been calling two mans out today. Dwayne Mann in nine for Warrington. And George Mann, who's wearing ten for St. Helens. They are cousins. There's George Mann and Dwayne in the background there just watching carefully as Jackson and Chambers completed the tackle. Griffiths to Rapati. Rapati, the man who picked off when it went straight into touch. This now is Kevin Wall. Bernard Dwyer back to Griffiths. Rapati, Griffiths takes over. And plonks one into the in-goal area. Bounces rather awkwardly for Kenyon. And he did well then. He did very well. Excellent play by the winger. Took it well in his stride. Calm, cool and collected. And that's what you need when you're under pressure like that. Excellent play. Bit disgruntled Neil Kenyon uh, earlier this season. And settled after being dropped recently. As for a transfer back in the fold now and doing well under pressure there this is Mackey gets the ball away to Bob Jackson but suddenly Warrington have stopped running they might start now with Ellis Kevin Ellis it's a great break over the top looking for Kenyon Kenyon tried to get round Lyon and couldn't do so Mackey again back to Dwayne Mann quick hands Colin this is Ellis Bateman's there in support Feeds Bateman. Last tackle. Great play by Mann and Shelford. Really did combine well to set it off on the blind side. Shelford with a little kick forward. Swept up by David Lyon. Oh, did he collide with the post there? Well, he did, and he was also caught in goal. Nice kick here by Shelford. You can see that Lyon had it covered well. But what's a prop forward? Comes straight through here. Whoa, Gary Chambers. Take that. That's a nightmare for the players. The fullback realized that the post was there. 
That is why they are very thick padding at the bottom. It was Shelford's little kick forward that caused all the danger for St. Helens. And Warrington have it back now with Neil Kenyon. The fact that David Lyon was tackled in the in-goal area means that St. Helens have to drop out from under their own sticks. And Warrington have another set of six. Wayne Mann, good little ball to Shelford. Nice reverse pass to Thornley. Well, Warrington are running the show at the moment. Excellent football. They're changing the tactics. The forwards are running at angles. They're creating the gaps. It really is confusing this defence. Kelly Shelford with the right wrist heavily uh, bandaged and strapped. He did have it in plaster after the cup tie against Castleford last week. Only pass fit to play at midday. Here comes Warrington again. Great ball back. And it's good defence from Warrington. From St Helens rather desperate defence. Man drops the ball back to Kevin Ellis. And he pushed it wide. Ellis under pressure. Just tried to slice one over for a one-pointer. Good thinking there, but it was old man that was in the way, Gary Sanderson, that forced him to push it to his left. But that really was good thinking by the Warrington side. They're playing champagne football. They're keeping this ball alive. Quick silver stuff. Yes, if you were a stranger in this ground, you had a look and deciding uh, who was top and who was tenth. But at the moment, the way Warrington have started here, you'd say they were the side in contention for the Stones Bitter Championship. George Mann using some strength to shrug off Kelly Shelford there. Griffiths was the man who took over. Dwyer was the dummy half. Rapati to Ward. Nickel to Rapati. Connolly. Connolly trying to get uh, Alan Hunt into it, maybe. Taking the tackle in the end himself. That's the halfway line. It's the last tackle for St. Helens. And Rapati dabs it forward. It bounces off Kevin Ellis. And it's six to go, says the referee. And that'll be a penalty. Kevin Ellis just lost his marbles for a moment there. Just snatched the ball away. He tried to, it appeared to me to try to put the ball back in there. Knew he'd made a mistake. <laughs> He's trying to... <laughs> didn't get away with it. So it was a penalty for stealing the ball in the tackle. Not allowed in this game. Quarter of an hour gone. Warrington with a two-point advantage. St. Helens looking for the first try here with Nickel. Inching closer to that Warrington line. This is Kevin Ward. A real battle between Ward and Paul Cullen. Dwyer, the dummy half, couldn't get past Ward then. So St. Helens bringing it this way to Mann. Excellent play. Griffith sends it out to Rapati. Rapati, the long ball out to Mann. And a beautiful pass there by Lachlan. It done the right thing. Neat little pass. He dragged in the winger, Neil Kenyon, towards him. The referee not happy with that final pass. Kenyon then. Possession, not too much to choose between the two sides. 16 minutes gone, ball in play, 12 minutes, 14 seconds. Non-stop stop. Forster. St. Helens crowd furious about something. And now he's out and forced into touch. Now the big question is, was it Mark Foster? Was his progress altered? I thought he was. Well, I think it's a penalty for something, Mike. I don't think he found touch at all. I think it perhaps was a, an a elbow bit of, or a bit of facial. Yeah, a little bit of facial there. Free of charge, but uh, painful nonetheless. Well, it's not going according to plan at the moment for St. Helens. Warrington playing vintage stuff here. That's a lovely ball. That was a touch high. As Lachlan tried to bring down uh, Alan Bateman. A touch. Mackey, Mackey again, gets the ball away to Sanderson, penalties four apiece, 
grain man. Formerly. Well, Kelly Shelford is running this show, running at different angles. So is this fella, bringing on the players. Ellis to Bateman. Bateman's had a stunning season for Warrington. Indifferent for the team, but the Welshman wearing three for Warrington tonight has been in superb form. Mackey with the high kick, Connolly's underneath it. And as he collected that, he was thundered by Mark Forster. A oh, great take there by the international centre, Gary Connolly. There was never any doubt who was going to take that. Crowd going berserk there. Alan Hunt got a pretty high one. John Harrison turning in the tackle, looking to unload the pass. Couldn't do so, though. Bernard Dwyer to Griffiths. Now, Rapati. Dear Rapati disappearing under that challenge. He is the halfway leader in the voting for First Division Player of the Year in Rugby League. Now, oh, knock on by Bernard Dwyer. Cullen went a bit high, and Dwyer didn't like what he saw. And I think the referee has penalised Dwyer, the retaliator, and then marched him 10 for something he said. Well, there was never any doubt. I bet uh, Dwyer wished that Cullen's arm stopped as quickly as that. It didn't. It continued through. He took offence. Said a few words to the referee, which is not on. And quite frankly, St. Helens are just losing their cool a bit. There you can see, that really was a high swing by Cullen. But that's what the penalty's for, Mike, the retaliation. Well, it always goes that way, doesn't it? It is as though it's something new to these players. They are professional. How many times do they know and realise it's a retaliator that gets caught? Be it right or wrong. Thornley with the penalty, and he misses that one. And that really has been the story of Tony Thornley's season. Some supporters at Warrington last week when I was talking to them implored me to say that Thornley is not a regular goal kicker, but he's been pressed into service because David Lyon is now transferred and here at St. Helens. Thornley misses with that one. 2-0 it is to Warrington, courtesy of Thornley's earlier penalty. Downstairs, Phil Arthur is talking now with the Warrington substitute, Neil Harmon. Neil, despite that penalty miss, it's still looking good for Wire, isn't it? Yeah, I think Saints look a little bit shaken at the moment. I don't know what uh, the game plan is, but I think they're losing the head for letting the word just gaining possession through it. And yet, you could have had a few more points on the board, couldn't you? That penalty miss apart. Yeah, we've been unlucky with a few moves. The switch moves are working well. Uh, the forwards are running the ball in hard, and I think the moves that's going to come off will uh, be the short ones off Greg and uh, Kelly Shelford. Neil Harmon with Bill Arthur. Meanwhile, on the pitch, it's with St Helens. Lyon finds Quirk. Big challenge by Cullen. Oh, Cullen's getting stuck in, isn't he? The number 11 in yellow and blue for uh, Warrington. He's not messing around, is he? He really is on a mission. That was good play, though, by Jonathan Griffiths, who's in the sweeping role. Whole host of Warrington players then standing in an offside position. Referee Ollerton allowing them to uh, go on St Helens. This is Rapati. Back to Griffiths. Good run from Griffiths. Great run this from Griffiths. He's going to go round Penny if he can. And uh, Penny was lucky that Thornley came in there and just impeded Griffiths. But Saints rolling forward with Wall. Dwyer, the dummy half, gets the ball out to Alan Hunt. Back inside to Connolly. Connolly trying to keep it alive to Nickel. Warrington have it back with Ellis. P-A-N-I-C, panic. That's a message that must be going out there. This is the try-saving tackle. Wonderful play by Penny. But the man there, Thornley, helped him on. But what a great break by Jonathan Griffiths. I said before the game, Eddie, that they probably would miss the direction of Shane Cooper. But what a man to bring in with the quality of this man, Jonathan Griffiths. Yes, he was stopped by a combination of Thornley and Penny. And Lee Penny, the uh, young fullback, already picked out by Malcolm Reilly as a member of the Great Britain under-21 team to play France later this year. He said that on Sky, remember, at uh, the match at Castleford a couple of weeks ago. And rightly so, young Penny really has played well. He's taking his chance, that's what it's all about. Come up through the grades. This is a rip-roaring local derby, though, isn't it? 
St. Helens looking for their form. Warrington playing on the top of theirs. And Warrington ahead by two points to nil. And just over 21 minutes gone. Yeah, typical tough derby. There's a lot of talk out there. There's a lot of niggling. They really are getting stuck into each other in the verbal department. Chris Joint did well then to find Sonny Nickel. Nickel fed Alan Hunt down the line. That's a good tackle. That was a great tackle over on that far side. It was Greg Mackey, I think. Connolly to Rapati. St. Helens rolling forward in numbers now. Lion to Lockman. Lockman try! The league leaders at last find their form. Lockman's first try of the season. Stones with a championship ray play. It all comes about by the long run down on the right hand side. Get the ball out wide. Rapati misses a man. It was man out to the fullback, David Lyon. They had the extras. The sliding defense was too slow. And the center, Paul Lockman, in for it. Long ball here, you'll see from Rapati. Excellent stuff. The big man comes through. Lyon Lincoln in superbly. Neil Kenyon was the man that had to go in. Excellent play. Lachlan got it down. Yes, his first of the season. 21 goals, though. The big tall centre has uh, scored this season. And he's about to attempt to make it 22. Lachlan, in his benefit year. Been here at St Helens now 10 years. Great Britain international. But he hasn't got the sights in as far as the kicking's concerned. But his try has made it four points to two in St Helens' favour. You'll see quite clearly the sliding defence of Warrington, but I'm afraid Neil Kinnear there has been brought through. That's the gap that's coming for him, and that's the gap that Lachlan goes through. Look at it out wide. Just not quick enough to get across. Great try. For Lachlan, two broken arms, but now well and truly back in the fold. 25 minutes gone. 4-2, Saints lead. What a good game, though, Mike, again. Oh, excellent football from both sides. There's plenty of talent on show tonight. We said that it would be a high-scoring game, and I've certainly nothing to doubt that. Connolly collecting the kickoff. Ellis and Kelly Shelford wheeling him in. Griffiths. George Mann. Oh, he just attempted to push Paul Pullen away. John Harrison now for St Helens. George Mann. Bernard Dwyer, the dummy half. This is Chris Joint. Chris Joint moved over here to St Helens from Oldham and three St Helens players went in the opposite direction. And the St Helens crowd, I think, getting at the referee, Ian Ollerton, for all the offsides he's missing. He's definitely missed another one there for mine. Well, it's pretty difficult for the referee because there's this niggling going on. People are trying to go high. They're trying to just upset their opposition. He's only got one pair of eyes. Lee Penny disappears under the challenge from Joint and Rapati. Now Bateman, he's always looking to break from positions like that. Trying to go through the gaps that sometimes aren't there. Mackey dabs the ball forward. He's leading the chasers too as Lyon collects this. There's Mackey playing all his teammates on side. And Lyon slipped through him and Kenyon. He really is enjoying himself here at St. Helens, David Lyon. Bit of a shame, really, though, Eddie, the Warrington side. It's, it's been sort of gone all the way through the season. They've been making the gaps and they've been making the breaks. But once again, they've still failed to get the vital tries that they need. Yes, they've certainly had the better of the opening 20 minutes here. Bernard Dwyer in possession for them with uh, Kelly Shelford all over him. And eventually finished off by Dwayne Mann. Griffiths now. 
Connolly turns the ball back inside Griffiths that's good play Nickel last tackle and Jackson penalised for not getting out of the way not allowing Nickel to regain his feet well, there you can see a bit of a flop in action, really. Bob Jackson coming in when he really didn't have to. Half flop, semi flop, doesn't matter. The penalty is given. And that's what frustration does for you. All that hard work, all they came away with was two points. By far the better side in the opening stanza. St. Helens make two bursts and finish up with a try. It's a cruel game sometimes. So it's going to be Lachlan with a penalty and a shot at goal. That arm that he's broken twice, heavily strapped, as you can see. It's a bit like uh, the protective padding that uh, Mal Meninga, the Australian captain, had on his broken arm. I know that Lachlan has taken a lot of uh, encouragement from the fact that Meninga made such a successful comeback. Lachlan with this penalty then. And he misses another. That's nothing successful from two attempts. His try, though, means that uh, St. Helens have a 4-2 advantage over Warrington. Both coaches will be realising, though, that these missed chances to add those extra one point or two points from the penalty kicks, they're so important. Just gives you that lever, that bit of confidence build. Bernard Dwyer's the dummy half. This is Chris Joint. Scampering run from Joint, but watched all the way by Kelly Shelford. Griffiths. Harrison. You probably will have noticed that uh, St. Helens have slowed things down. You see, they're not running in with the same gusto. They realize that they can just, well, not be doing things like that. That was a knock on, I think, from a Warrington player. Ward trying to get the ball away. Now, which way will it be given by the referee? Well, he's given it St. Helens' head and feed. Yeah, well, it's obviously deemed that a Warrington player's hand did interfere with Ward trying to get that pass away. Gary Connolly. And now Chris Joint. Left by Mackey. And a bit of help, too, from Gary Sanderson, the second rower. This is Nickel. Gradually, Mike, you get the impression, I think, that uh, St. Helens are beginning to find their feet and find their form. Oh, but <laughs> there we are. Hex them again. You do a pretty good job of that <laughs> over the years. Yeah, but even so, that was a bad pass there. Afraid that George Mann couldn't get hold of that one, but... Yeah, you just get that feeling that St. Helens have got the message out from their coach, Mike McLennan. Stop doing things 100 miles an hour. The gaps will come. They have the, especially the speed out wide. Just over half an hour gone then. St. Helens four, Warrington two. Warrington in possession now with Ellis. Oh, and Bob Jackson steamrolled Kevin Ellis into the floor then. Touch of the comedy capers that. Cullen, ball in field two. The uh, loose forward Shelford who then found Thornley and it all went so very, very wrong for Warrington and for St. Helens. And the referee says that the ball was stolen by Connolly. No doubt in my book. Plain to see, not only for us, but the referee. Penalty given. Crowd can boo all they want. Won't change it. So Warrington with the penalty. It drags them further towards those St. Helens posts. So they're in possession now with Ellis. And Alan Hunt coming back to snuff out the danger of the fullback Lee Penny. Chambers the prop forward with a step through Ward and Dwyer. Mackey. Nice ball from Mackey to Ellis. Lovely running from Cullen. Well watched by Lachlan. Joint was there too. Man. Mackey. Ellis. Over the top. Cullen continues it on to Bateman. He's found Kenyon. Kenyon. 
Damien Ogg, should he go for the corner? Well, he knew, but he turned the ball back inside, and it was a forward pass. Well, I can't no believe the wing. I can't believe it, Eddie. Neil Kenyon, he had the line at his mercy and took the option to get the pass inside to the hooker. Dwayne Mann, and it was forward a mile. But really, he should have gone for the corner. The gap was there. He had the speed, surely. Another missed chance. And that is a vital one. Now, to my mind, he should have set sail. You see, he hesitates there. There's no one in the picture. He would have sailed in into the corner for a four-pointer. Alan Bateman has received a bang in the movement up to that point. It was his pass that fed Neil Kenyon, and he's receiving treatment from the Warrington physio, Tony Rothwell. The clout on the uh, right shoulder and the neck. Looks like he might be fit to carry on. Here it is. See the ball being out wide, and just as you released it, ooh, him there. Lachlan it was, it was coming in. Pretty high as well. Neil Harmon coming on for Bob Jackson. So Neil Harmon, who we heard from uh, not long ago with Bill Arthur on the bench, now out there in the thick of the action. And Bob Jackson with a chest infection. So he goes off. There was a doubt about Jackson before the match got underway here tonight, but passed himself fit to play. Up just needs a breather. We'll see him a bit later on. This is Lachlan, meanwhile. St Helens and he used his strength then when Kenyon tackled him to stay in the field of play but that was also a good play by Kenyon maybe he was the villain a few seconds ago but he did the right thing he allowed Lachlan to go towards the touchline used it very well Harrison straight turning looking for support there was none there Rapati now <laughs> High kick, oh, was a tester here for the youngster. He spilled it, but it went backwards. He got it second attempt. Good play by the youngster Lee Penny there, and also good refereeing by Ian Ollerton. As soon as the kick was put up there, he was shouting really loud to tell Alan Hunt that he was well offside. Five minutes to half time, 4 2 St Helens with the narrowest of leads. Kenyon not going far when Kevin Ward is ahead of him. This is Sanderson. Mackey. Ellis. Missed out Bateman. Bateman still looking a bit groggy from that neck injury. And it was a forward pass. Ellis trying to do the one, two. But really, Bateman had taken his eyes off the ball, wasn't really expecting it. Ellis realizes it. It's caught between two minds there. Rapati to Connolly. Now Lachlan and Lyon linking in. He tried to get the pass out to Hunt. But as he tried to pass it, he was hit by the defender. Alan Hunt did well, really, to retrieve the situation. Keep St. Helens in possession. Griffiths picks one up off his toes to joint to man. Shelford all over him, but Mann gets the ball away to Nickel. Such strength from Sonny Nickel. Harrison. Griffiths. Rapati. Did well then, Rapati. He's managed to reach the ball first. St. Helens in possession again with Joint. That's the last tackle. It's so quick. Connolly hoists another high one. Another tester for young Penny. Penny missed that one. Kenyon back helping out the fullback and just got to the ball first. Well, it appeared that the young fullback Lee Penny lost that in the in the lights. He's bouncing on the top of his head. Kevin Ward bearing down upon him. Oh. Sanderson almost speared into the ground by Bernard Dwyer, but not quite, thankfully. Shelford can't go anywhere, joint and Connolly. That looked a touch forward, but the referee was well placed on that occasion, said play on. 
the last one Kelly Shelford Warrington electing to run it but not for long it's now with Griffiths St. Helens very eager to play this ball quickly trying to catch Warrington offside again there is a ton of support out here for St. Helens but Lachlan couldn't keep hold of that it was great tackling back by Alan Bateman just interfered enough there but Lachlan overran that pass Neil Kenyon now there you see it he's overrun it having to grab back for it never any chance of taking full control Penny in possession for Warrington and he was uh, collared by Connolly two of the outstanding young talents of the British game on show there Lee Penny and Gary Connolly Neil Harmon a lot of shouts and screams from the crowd tonight for forward passes referees seen plenty but a lot of referees out there Eddie <laughs> that's good play from Kelly Shelford the ball comes free Penny has it for Warrington could make no progress it's the last tackle now it's with Mackey that sails over the head of Les Quirk takes a kind bounce and the St Helens winger is able to run at the onrushing Warrington players led by Alan Bateman good chase and tackle by Bateman he's having a good season only a slim slight fellow but he really gets stuck in doesn't he Harrison Dwyer the dummy half St Helens looking for the try that would just ease the pressure at half time inside the final minute of this first half now plus whatever the timekeepers add on Kevin Ward turning his back on the tacklers looking to unload then thinking better of it last one for St Helens Rapati clips that one downfield Alan Hunt onto that like a hare and Lee Penny had to be brave then and he was ready well it was a nice kick there by Rapati and Penny was equal to that task look at him going in here Hunt charging down on him did the right thing just ducked on the inside perhaps may have caught it got himself a penalty but a bit of a flop there late we're in stoppage time Warrington in possession with Bateman and now with Shelford and Harmon Harmon doing well. Here's Alan Bateman again. Again he goes for that gap. The gap that almost wasn't there. Stopped right on halfway. Ellis to Mackey. Mackey to Penny. Last one. Mackey again with the kick downfield. Les Quirk picks it up. Les Quirk trying to take on Kenyon with a little bit of help from Alan Bateman in fact with a lot of help from Bateman he was pulled down great half here of rugby league half time St Helens 4 Warrington 2 nothing to choose between these two sides at the break Kevin Ward has led by example as he usually does up front for St Helens